This is the bonus content for day one. Uh, this video has and addresses two needs that the packet didn't talk about. Um, we just left off with section three, exercise four. Uh, I wanted to show you the difference between writing an explicit and a recursive formula. The explicit formula uses the first term and the difference, and so does the recursive formula. We might have noticed in our last section, the recursive formula always looks the same and starts the same way with the value of your first term, and the next term being defined by what happens to the previous term. It seemed very convenient to write your recursive formula. So the first term is 69. It looks like we're increasing by 17 each time. So we're gonna add 17 to the previous term to find the next term. Four integers and greater than or equal to two. The explicit formula uh, does again use the first term, the difference this way. A sub n equals the first term is 69 plus the difference 17 times the quantity n minus one. When I distribute, let's see, 16, sorry, 16, 69 times 17 n minus 17, a sub n equals, if I subtract this, well, first we'll start with the n, 17 n, and then we're gonna add to this, I believe that's 52, question mark, 52 and 17, let's add those back together to be sure, and this formula works for integers n greater than or equal to one. Now, it might be easier to write this formula, but let's say we were asked to find, I don't know, let's say we were asked to find the 20th term. What is the value of the 20th term? Which formula would you want to use? An explicit formula or a recursive formula? Think about it. If you said explicit formula, I think that would be the wisest idea. I just plug in 20, the value of the term number, to get the value of the 20th term. What would I need to do to find the 20th term with this formula? Knowing the first term, the difference, I'd find the 20th term by adding 17 to the 19th term. What is the 19th term? Well, the 19th term is 17 more than the 18th term. And what's the 18th term? 18th term is 17 more than the 17th term, and so on and so forth, and it's a process. So in order to find the 20th term, what probably we should do is use the explicit formula. Um, it's probably a good idea to be able to write an explicit formula from a recursive formula and vice versa. So you would just do 340 plus 52, that's 392, and that's the value of your 20th term. Um, the other thing I wanted to cover is, what if you don't have consecutive terms? One neat trick about arithmetic sequences is if you have any two terms, you can be able to write an explicit formula for this uh, doing some quick and simple math. So let's take a look at how we can do this. What I'm gonna do is find an exercise for us to work on. So let's say we knew two specific terms. Let's say we knew the value of our fifth term in an arithmetic sequence was 32. And then let's say we knew the value of our 23rd term was 86. So how would we find an explicit formula for this? Now we do realize that there's a constant increase or a decrease happening. To get from the fifth term to the 23rd term, we know that the values are increasing, so our difference should be positive. One of the advantages of having and understanding that this is arithmetic is finding a difference is just like calculating a slope. You take the average rate of change between these two numbers um, because it's a constant. It will remain the same either way. So we're going to do like the change in the y divided by the change in the x, where the outputs are the y values and the inputs are their term numbers. Your difference can be found by calculating this. 86 take away 32, dividing it by 23, minus 5. So we have the change in the values of the outputs. Let's see, that's 54. And dividing it by the change of the inputs, let's see, that's 18. It looks like we have a whole number because 18 goes into 54 three times. It looks like our difference is three. Now we're halfway home. We still wanna find the value of your first term. Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a trick and plug in all of our information that we are aware of. We know that our general formula, a sub n equals a sub one plus d times the quantity n minus one. And we have some specific terms. I'm gonna use the term, the fifth term to do this. The value of my fifth term is the value of my first term we know the difference is three, and if we have a five here, that means a five goes here, and five minus one makes four. Let me slide this up a bit. We can find the right-hand side is the first term plus 
4 times 3, which makes 12. And we can substitute the value of our fifth term, 32, in place of the a sub 5 here. To subtract 12 from both sides, I get 20 is the value of our first term. Now, we have the two pieces of information to either write an explicit or a recursive formula. I'm going to write my recursive formula. Uh, might be quicker. a sub 1 equals 20. a sub n equals the previous term. And we said plus 3 for integers n is greater than or equal to 2. My explicit formula, a sub n, equals 20 plus 3 times the quantity n minus 1. And when I simplify it, I get a sub n equals 3n plus 17 for integers n is greater than or equal to 1. So using slope will help you to find the difference in an arithmetic pattern. We just do the change in the terms divided by the change in their term numbers to divide them. And then we can plug in a specific term value and where its location is in the sequence. Like the term value was 32, it's fifth in the sequence. We plug in the fives for n, and 32 represents the value of the fifth term, so I substituted it here. I hope you found this helpful. Thanks for watching the bonus content to day one. Um, good luck to you in doing your homework assignments, and until tomorrow, bye-bye.